Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Will Schick, Director of Product Development for Atomic Mass Games. Excited to be back with you in action this week. This is my first stream of the week because I was a bit on vacation over the first half. Uh, so I'm back to it, and we're going to wrap up the work that we started last week on Captain America Sam Wilson. Um, so I'm going to get this camera off of me, and we're going to jump right in and get things going because we only have an hour, and I've got a lot that I want to work on. Uh, with this miniature. So if you didn't join us last week, uh, be sure to go check out um, everything that was happening uh, because we uh, went through and in one hour we kind of painted this Sam Wilson up to uh, a very, what I would call a tabletop standard. So that was um, super fun to do and we went through a lot of techniques that we use like, quite a bit where uh, we used washes, we used glazes, um, we didn't do any like real highlighting or anything like that. So today what I wanna do is kind of show the second half of the process. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dive back in um, and we're going to basically update and enhance all of the colors that we've done here. So we're gonna take everything that the wash gives us uh, in terms of our shading and kind of our natural shadows with the Zenith Prime. We're going, we're gonna accentuate those, accentuate those uh, with a little bit of highlighting, some blending, uh, and then I think we'll try to dive in and maybe do a little bit on the explosion as well. So first things first, um, let's just go ahead and we're going to start with the reds. So what I'm going to be using is for last week for kind of the base wash, which is what all the reds are currently, I used this Model Air uh, Red, which is an amazing color, works really well over Zenith. So today I'm going to be using this uh, Ball Crimson from the Fancy Games line, and I'm going to be using Baharit Red, and I might mix in a little bit of the Tiamat Orange as well if I want to get to a really high highlight, which is right here. Um, we're going to be playing with these colors just kind of like build up some highlights. I'm not going to do anything super crazy here, uh, but we just want to get a little bit more um, color into those reds, make them pop a bit, give them some nice definition and some edge highlighting, things like that. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that base red into the uh, ball crimson, which is where I'm gonna start my highlights, just because I wanna have a little bit of that nice um, basic red, that primary red, ready to go in there. And all I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna grab my blending brush and I'm just gonna start by looking at any area where I want to add a little bit of highlight. So maybe right here where the wing curls down, we get a little bit of red there. Come over here on the top of these wings. And I'm just gonna really quickly knock in these colors. Uh, I'm not gonna be super precious about it. I'm mostly aiming for the, uh, the outer edge of each of the wing membranes, or at least the, each of the feathers as it were. Um, and this color isn't gonna necessarily immediately pop right off, but we're gonna use a little bit of a glazing approach because we thin down our paint just a bit. And I can build these layers up uh, over the course of a couple of applications to make the transition stronger. And so using glazing or transparencies gives you a lot of control and also can help you really make really smooth natural gradients on colors without necessarily having to resolve or resort to using like a secondary blending brush or doing edge highlighting per se. Um, it works a little bit like an edge highlight because you just want to think about where you want those colors to be. And you come back through and as that glaze dries, you can make the results a little stronger just by simply reapplying the paint in the exact same area. And so you kind of do the same thing over and over again. And if you hit less of the edge or less of the area than you might have when you started, you're gonna build up that opacity, which is gonna make the whole effect look stronger. And it's also gonna to lead to that gradient. So I really like kind of using this technique in addition to utilizing that secondary brush too, if I need to blend out or erase a mistake because it gives you so much control. It is a little slower because again, you are very slowly 
building up that color through these different glazes and transparencies. Uh, it's a really great technique to use on skin tones because you can start from a very nice foundation of skin and then you can really gently and naturally build up the colors of your skin tones with the opacity. And one of the things I've found with uh, especially a lot of um, skin tone paints you know, like the flesh tones and stuff, is that they do have a tendency to get chalky, kind of like white does. And if you don't keep the skin colors and your application really smooth and even, it can kind of ruin the effect. So using glazes, because the paint stays really thin and smooth and it takes a few layers to build up the opacity, you don't really have to worry as much about getting that chalky finish or having the paints kind of clump up on you. And then having somebody's face where it's got way more texture than it should. You know, you want those skin tones to be nice and smooth. Um, so everything's going on there. Come in. Let me hit right here. And again, this is a technique that you can really choose how extreme you want those gradients, those highlights to be like. Um, if you really want smooth gradients, it's kind of like edge highlighting, uh, in a way in that the more edge highlights you do, the more impressive the gradient will be, the more layers and blends you'll have. Now this, this Sam Wilson isn't meant for the worthy painting competition, um, might submit him to hashtag painting protocol when we're done, of course, because why wouldn't we? Got to show off what we're working on. Uh, but I'm not looking for, you know, studio level results on my blends. I just want that extra bit of color pop and vibrancy and contrast to just take this mini to the next level and really make him look alive and very much like he just flew out of a comic book. Um, so now that I'm not on those big broad parts of the wings, I'm pretty much just shifting back to kind of more traditional edge highlight where I'm aiming the paint to just hit the really sharp raised edges to add that extra level of contrast and definition between the areas. If we go a little bit over like we did there, let's grab that second brush and we can erase it out. So here it's just mostly by feel. So we're just looking for those little spots in the costume where we can add that zing of light and we'll build that up over a couple of different reds. And again, like we talked about last week, the great thing about using that model air red, especially over Zenith Prime, is that much like any high contrast washing, you get a mid-tone and a shade and a little bit of highlight just naturally. So you don't have to necessarily worry about this step if you're just looking for that nice tabletop look. Um, but like we've talked about, the hobby part is a really fun and enjoyable part of the experience and growing your skills and taking those miniatures and your paint schemes to a new level is part of the big wide enjoyment. And the only way to do that is to continue to practice and work on your skills. And this is a really nice staged approach to do it. So maybe, you know, you start and you get Sam painted that tabletop standard using the techniques we showed off last week. You're really happy with them. You know that one day you kind of want to come back to him after you practice or maybe you play some games with him and he does really well. And you're just loving the new Avengers Swarm list. Taking him with like Ant-Man and Wasp and War Machine, his buddy Rhodes. Maybe even a Winter Soldier because you like the show and, you know, Winter Soldier's only three points. He had some some options to the list. 
and you're you're sold. Sam Wilson is now going to become in your regular rotation, and so you're like, okay, well let's let's give him a little bit of that extra love, a little bit of extra treatment, so that because he's earned it, and this is a great place to just come back in, and it shows that you can, you never have to be done painting any of these characters if you don't want to. You can always come back and add your canvas, or you can. Always just dive back in and do a brand new version as well. For those who are just tuning in, they might be like, why is Sam Wilson in such not Captain America colors? And the answer is, is when we started last week, we thought it'd be fun to do a little bit more of a classic Falcon color scheme on our Captain America Sam Wilson. So we went for this kind of darker green gray uh, mix on the basic suit and then of course these really bright falcon reds kind of paying homage to his traditional colors i like to think of this kind of a stealth suit sam or maybe covert ops sam you know his superhero covert ops suits are never really that covert opsy they're just a little more muted or maybe slightly more believable as like a as a normal uniform but it's still a man with bright red jet wings flying around throwing a uh, vibranium discus. So, all right, I'm going to shift over and grab, so I'm going to add some Verharit red into our mix here. And again, we're just going to kind of go through and do some really quick edging for those highlights. And so this, I want to be even more kind of limited to the spots where I think the highest highlights would be. And we'll do this one more time, probably with a little bit of the Tiamat red in there, because the more contrast we can add, the more visually stunning it's going to look like on that tabletop. For this, I'm mostly just looking at the very tips of the wing feathers. I'm just kind of letting the brush and the color go around the edges, I'm leaving a lot of the basic color on the shadows. And there are areas like down here where the shield is kind of putting the feathers, the wings into shadow that I might not even touch with this particular highlight because again this is kind of our upper edge here so we just want to make sure that we're getting that in being careful with it I know a lot of folks have Mary Poppins y'all uh, I mean that's that's certainly one uh, I mean the Guardians in general are a group that I can't wait to have some more fun with and go back to and I think there's a lot of characters still that we haven't even explored you know um, even outside of the current MCU stuff uh, the rotating cast of characters is just that's one of the fun things about the Guardians is that every creative team kind of brings its own group together um, I mean the most current run is just a wild gamut of different characters. You know, we haven't even talked about Moon Dragon or Philovel. We got characters like Beta Ray Bill. I don't think he's currently on the most current team, but he was on one of the last runs a couple of years ago. So there's a lot of great characters that I'd love to get to and you know like we always talk about in a long enough timeline our goal is to get to every character in the marvel universe and maybe even do a couple of them a few times because i think several characters are well deserving of some repeats and we've done a few of those already we have our two black widows we have 
coming out either now or soon, depending on where you are in the world. Thanks to the global logistics of getting out of that pandemic. Everything's been a little screwy. Um, Amazing Spider-Man as the latest variation of Peter Parker in the game. I'm really excited for what those characters and what they allow us to do in terms of scoping out power sets and play styles and all that. It'd be really, I mean, honestly, it'd be impossible for many of these characters, given their long histories within Marvel and stuff. I mean, take Sam Wilson here. Um, we did what I think was an amazing time period for Sam in the comics when he took over the mantle of Captain America. And there were so many awesome stories that came out of his tenure in it. And of course now in the wider Marvel media, that kind of story arc has become really important to where like the MCU and stuff is going and all that. But even without that, um, when we were working on the initial batch of crisis protocol and thinking about the future and stuff, I always knew. So at the time I was like neck deep in Sam Wilson as captain America. I always knew that Sam was going to be in a captain American game and be one of the leaders for the Avengers affiliation and stuff. And that was definitely a thing that we wanted to get to and we wanted to explore and see. And so it was really fun and exciting as a team and as a fan of all the great Marvel stories to be able to dive in and do that and represent what was such a powerful, you know, moment and story within the comics. And I love what the creative teams were able to bring to both, you know, the character and kind of the stories of Marvel and its universe and everything with their opportunity to put Sam with the shield. And I'm, of course, also very excited to be able to live out and play out my own stories on the Crisis Protocol tabletop, which is always the primary thing we think about when looking at the game design and everything, is that Marvel Crisis Protocol is that is that vehicle that allows players the opportunity to tell their own Marvel stories and recreate their favorite moments, but also tell tales and make an impact and have agency on the world and the universe that they love so much in a way that, you know, if you can't draw comics or you're not much of a story writer or whatever, you may not get the opportunity to do that very often or at all. But with Crisis Protocol, grab your favorite squad and roster of characters and build the narrative around what's happening based on the game parameters and go in and tell. You know, make your dream team and do it. It's kind of like Dallas and Mai's game last week on stream after a whole month in May of, of uh, dynamically telling a roster, a story, a Marvel story through the creation of our rosters and the random picks that we, uh, we did to start the whole roster challenge. And then of course the, you guys in the chat and the community coming together and helping flesh out the rest of our 10 characters on the roster. And it was fun to just, build our own little narrative and story within the Marvel universe that we now have forever to go back to and talk about. And we have the squads and everything and the teams. And we, we had our big climactic game. We learned, we learned who the mastermind was behind the disaster and who the real traitor was and all that good stuff. But just because our big game last week answered those questions. Doesn't mean that we're done playing 
in that kind of like subset of the Marvel universe that we created and brought to life through our hobby and through our interactions with you all in the community and stuff like that. And I think that's so cool. I've been seeing a lot of folks online on social media and stuff posting about their mutant masterworks events that they've been taking part in. And of course that's telling a very classic story in a brand new way of Magneto showing up, trying to steal some nuclear weapons for his own evil devices and uh, a bunch of heroes and crisis teams coming together, trying to stop him before he can do all the bad things, you know? And, uh, a story that you get to tell with your friends and maybe sometimes Magneto wins and sometimes he loses and all that stuff so you know it's it's been fun it has been a blast and of course we're still painting we're going to finish up this Sam Wilson but next week uh, we've got Jean Grey coming up. Um, so I'll be painting Jean on Tuesday. Dallas will be kicking off painting Omega Red, which kind of got spoiled um, due to his computer issues that he had earlier in the week, which was very unfortunate. Uh, but he's going to be painting Omega Red finally in all his glory on Thursday. I know BK just posted the Omega Red panel to play. So I have no doubt that if you keep your eyes open on the website and social medias that next week you'll be seeing a stat card for one Omega Red. So you can ooh and ah over everything that he's going to bring to the game. And that was such a fun character to design and develop. Um, Omega Red has like, he's just one of those characters that so we've talked about a couple of times, and I think Dallas has mentioned that you always knew, you know, the comic run was getting serious when Omega Red showed up, because it was always it was always kind of a slow build, and they'd be like, oh, and then Sabretooth would show up, and you'd be like, oh, it was Sabretooth all along, uh, and then of course, you know, they would deal with Sabretooth, and then you'd be like, okay, well, I guess it's over, and then I'd be like, nope, psych, Omega Red's here, and you'd be like, oh, it's going off the chains now, it's serious. And uh, that was definitely a character that was really fun to work on, has such a unique and interesting power set. And like many, like many of the characters that we do, um, is very iconic and has kind of expectations, I think, from the fans and the people who love those stories and everything. And, and so it was, a, it was a neat challenge to try to be like, okay, how do we bring this character to life? What kind of abilities and unique place can we bring into crisis protocol with him and how does he play and i'm really excited for people to get a look at him and see those rules in depth because he does some very unique things that we haven't seen before uh, or yet in the game and i think uh you know, he's just a blast to play on table he feels like the monster that he is Omega Red's threat level, uh, it's four. I'll give you I'll give you the threat level, it's four, because I'm back from vacation and I don't fear BK right now. So I'm still I'm still living the dream life here. But he is he's definitely a, he's definitely a strong, powerful piece. I really like messing with your opponents and has a fun play pattern as well that I think feels very unique to Omega Red between how death spores and that kind of stuff work, kind of harkening back to his comics. He's got some neat, uh, he's got some pretty fun team tactic cards as well, a few of which uh, are very heavily influenced by, I know, how dare I? You can't stop me right now. I mean, you can yell at me later, but you can't stop me now. He has some really cool team tactic cards too. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that red. So you can see how we've really like punched up the highlights on this. 
just utilizing those different stages of red. And so now we have a really nice looking thing. And so now I'm gonna go back and what I wanna do is take my rainy gray and black mixture that I used for the suit. I'm gonna add a bit more black to it uh, again, cause I wanna just really darken it up. I'm gonna use this as just a really quick extra shade layer cause I don't want, I really don't want to highlight the suit too much. We are gonna do something kind of fun to it though here um, in a second. We're gonna add some little like fabric stretch marks using a really poppy highlight, but that's gonna be really minimal. Um, so for this shade, I'm really just looking to get in. And this time I am gonna use the blending brush probably a lot more. So I'm mostly just looking to get into like, like where, let's say this pocket meets up with the pants. And then like where the armor, the knee armor kind of meets in there. We can go into where maybe this fold is. And I'm just gonna use a secondary brush to help kind of blend out these deeper shadows. And this will again just add that extra level of contrast that's going to help the eye. We really see the different areas and gradations and build up some of those volumes. And this is a little bit like a dark line um, step, but I'm mostly just using it on like the folds. And so it is, it is a shadow, but I'm approaching it in a similar way. So I'm just looking for those areas where I want separation between the different panels of the cloth, so like the thigh to this part, because we have this nice little like seam line here. So I'm going to accentuate that utilizing our look. Uh, I can come over here under to where the shadow would be more. Again, just utilizing that secondary blending brush and kind of blend out these colors and get a little bit more of that natural patterning going on. This is also the step where I can come in and maybe fix any of the issues I might have around the star here. You do want to be careful though, because this is a really dark version of the color. So if I notice like issues that weren't in between these little sections, I might instead come in with like the base color, and just build it out. But we can dark line kind of around the red areas here. Cause I know that I got a little sloppy working in between these sections and that's okay. And I'll just make those areas pop a little bit better. And so especially on like the underside of these reds and stuff, we can come in, do the same thing. Maybe like back here, we might not be perfectly full. So we'll just put some in there. Like right here where we definitely came over the top of that red section. Can do that. Get in here. Deepen up that part. We come around the belt. Just kind of help that. And potentially we thin this out to where it's nice and kind of like almost to a wash consistency. We're really steady with our hand. Come in use it to help build out lines between the different segments on the torso. I'm pretty happy with that. So again, we're really just looking for where do we need that shadow and that shade to build things up. And then 
What we can do there is come back in again, grab some of that basic mix. And let's just say this got a little too dark. We can knock in a little bit of highlight. And so for the highlight, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab I want to grab, I'm going to grab a little bit of Miskatonic Gray. I'm going to mix that in to the rainy gray and a little bit of black mix. And I want to see what that gives us here. Looks pretty good. Let me go up one more step. So I'm just trying to color match a little bit of how that initial mix stretched over the Zenith Prime. And this can be one of the tricks about kind of coming back and doing highlighting on Zenith Prime washes is that you do have to do a little color matching magic because you obviously can't use the base color for, um, you can't use the base color because that obviously isn't exactly what's happening on the miniature because what's happening on the miniature is that paint pigment stretching out over the zenith prime so it's changing its it's changing its value and its color um, all i'm doing here is i'm just coming in i'm just kind of like adding some really quick kind of texturing highlights so it's just like really quick Kind of striations, which if you look at it really close, look pretty messy, but from tabletop, kind of like normal miniature viewing distance, arm's length as people like to call it, uh, what it does is it adds a really great amount and a feeling of that cloth fabric weave. And it just helps sell the idea that this guy's wearing a suit. Uh, so you can do this, and it's a very fast and effective way to kind of knock out highlights, especially in dark colors. Because again, you know, like the thing that really makes dark colors pop are their highlights. So getting those little like zing highlights in can make a huge difference to the final look of the fabric and the feel of the highlighting and stuff. So you should always... Uh, you should always take that moment and even if you just go in and add a couple of them because even just a few little lines over black will make that black feel way more alive and real and it's really simple to do especially when you have that second brush so you can come in and, and fix any of the mistakes that you might make if your line gets too big but you just come in and really quickly just knock in a couple lines Blend them out a little bit, and now all of a sudden you have this nice texture that the eye will pick up on and blends nice and neatly into the overall composition of the miniature. But if you get really up close and personal with it, you're of course going to see all these different lines. It's not unlike classic comic books that were done with the dot technique, where you just have a bunch of different colored dots and they all come together and make a big picture. Doing something kind of similar here with the lines. The suit like that, so we're just gonna go in really quick, just kind of knock it out really fast. All right, so there's the grays all highlighted up. You see, we got that extra level of shadow and highlight, so everything's looking really sharp now. And we have 30 minutes left, which is great. So let's do a little bit on the shield. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab some, not that, Garnet Alchemy, I think. This is the one that I want. Yeah. So I'm just gonna grab some Garnet Alchemy, which is a metallic red. The explosion well, I can show you how I paint the explosion, which is not the way that Brendan likely paints the explosion, who is our amazing studio painter. But we'll get there. 
So let's just really quick do a little highlighting on the shield, and then I think we can dive right in because I would be pretty happy with this. Um, so here I'm just going to kind of take that Garnet Alchemy. I'm going to go over kind of the top of the shield, and then I'm just really quickly going to do the same thing on the exact opposite side of the shield. So it's kind of like a half circle and a half circle. And then I'll just take my little blender brush and I'll blend it out. And go to this interior circle. Do that. And then I can grab a little bit of pure silver, uh, heavy metal from the scale line. And just kind of like soften that out. Well, there are a ton of great tutorials on like non-metallic metals and stuff and ways to approach the shield. I'm using true metallics here uh, with colors and you can make true metallics. Either you can get them from the scale line or you can just make your own colored metallics using inks. So a little drop, a few drops of red ink into your choice of silver. Will give you a lot of control and give you the ability to create your own cool looking metallics of any color. You can simply use inks over the top of a base metallic, which is kind of what we did last week. So for the reds, we used the airbrush red over silver. And then for the blue, we just used a little bit of cyan ink. And then the silvers themselves are just silvers. We'll come back over here and add a little bit to there. And then one more time, let's add a little more silver in. It's almost pure. Silver, just a little bit of that garnet left in it. Just a smidge. I'll just kind of like add in a couple of dots for. And these are just kind of like the little sunspot highlights that would happen, the reflector parts. So you can see how that kind of added that extra bit of sheen and shine to everything. For the blue, I'm actually just going to deepen up the blue, I think. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue ink. Ooh, not that much blue ink. Too much blue ink. And I just want to come in and help deepen up the blue on the shield since it is kind of towards the center. And there are a couple ways to do the white. So you could, we could just leave it silver. So just do a high value of silver, a high white value of silver. And there are a lot of really great options for that. Or we could start mixing in a bit of white and make a semi-metallic. Who has been my fave team to get on the table this year? Uh, you know, honestly, like right now, I'd have to cheat and say that it was the super group of randos my that I did for the May roster challenge. That was just fun and it was very unique. You know, no leadership, no affiliation, all that nonsense. Um, as far as like not roster challenge games, I think my favorite, well, my favorite team that I can talk about so far, um, I am super looking forward to hashtag Midnight Suns. I'll say that. That, that, that team uh, and the way in which I kind of started building out that squad and stuff, I have plans. I'm ready. I'm ready for painting Blade on stream. I'm ready to play some games with Blade on stream. Uh, and I'm very excited to be able to bring back some of the Midnight Sun shenanigans that I was running 
during playtest. So that's that's the team that I'm really looking forward to, uh, and one that I super enjoyed playing. I'm a big I'm a big fan of Blade, um, and he's another one that getting to actually you know have an impact and be like, oh, I get, I, I think we should do this character, not because he's one of my favorites. <clears throat> no, not at all. But because, you know, other reasons, it was like, yeah, it was great. So if I was going to walk off, if I was going to start today and I was going to get, and I was going to start my crisis protocol thing, um, I would probably go with, Ooh, that's a tough question. Um, I would probably do, man, see, now I'm stumped. Like, cause there are so many good, there's so many good options. It's really difficult to pick. Um, but right now, like I walk into the store right this minute. I'm like, what do I want to play today? I would probably do Inhumans Avengers, to be honest. Like, I think, I think I would go Inhumans Avengers so I would start with the core set Avengers because I think they're just really strong um, and a great place to start. And then I would add in the Inhumans. And this is too thick. That's okay. You can fix it. I can just probably save this part too and get to that explosion. I was going to add just a little bit of dark lining in there for some contrast. Just kind of split that apart. But we've done this stage a lot so you all know what to expect. So let's but you can see how getting a little bit of that black lining in there, helping separate out those shield rings really makes the metallic work. And then, of course, um, if you want to, you go back and just do a really thin red glaze if you wanted to make the red pop even more um, on the shield. Or you could leave it so that it was more kind of a metallic silver metal. Um, lots of different options as to how to approach that. Just really quick. Just want to wash that in. Get that separation a little bit. There we go. Okay. So let's talk about the explosions. So the way that I like to do these explosions, there's a there's a couple of different choices you have to make. So the first one is is it like a black oily gross explosion um or is it like a more poofy white you know yellow explosion um so the that that's kind of the first choice and i think what we'll do here is we'll probably just go um with the flow and we'll see what happens but it doesn't really matter too much because i'm going to start the same way either way so I'm going to use the ink tense yellow. I'm not even going to dilute this. I'm pretty much just going to take it right out of the pot. Um, you can, if you want to, add like uh, some Marduk yellow to it, just to give it a little more, a little more tooth and bite. Or any yellow. Take your ink, add a little bit of yellow. Not a lot, because you want this to stay pretty fluid. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up an orange ink because there's not an ink tense orange unfortunately. Um, but I'm going to mix up an orange ink using yellow and red, or in this case, crimson, because I like the crimson um, color. And then I'm going to just take red. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically wet blend all of these colors together over the explosion. Um, you want to think, so the big thing to think of is that, you know, the inside of the explosion should be uh, should be the brightest. And then as you move further away from like the center part of the explosion, it's going to get darker. Um, and then you're going to move into your smoke. So regardless of whether you want it to be a white cloud or more of a black cloud or a purple cloud or a green cloud, like whatever, whatever color you want the smoke of the explosion to be. Um, and I think like for Amazing Spider-Man, it could be really cool to do like a green more more greens and purples to show like a a pumpkin bomb because they always have like more of those green goblin style colors to them sometimes 
So you could do something really sickly and gross, um, Mysterio like smoke or things like that. So there's a lot of different ways to approach it, but kind of the, my approach to how I get the color on the miniature is pretty much the same. So you're just gonna like wash in. And of course, uh, important note, this really only works super well over a Zenith Prime because uh, if you did this over like a black or a darker, a really dark gray, that yellow is not gonna show up at all, right? So for this kind of way to do explosions to work, um, you have to be doing it over a light base coat. So you could go back in and repaint the smoke white or light gray, you know, if you really wanted to. There's, there's plenty of ways to do it um, if you don't prime Zenith or you don't prime black or anything like that, but you do have to do that. So um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my orange and I'm just going to start mushing in the orange and you're going to see that it's just going to get like really runny and it's going to mix together and this will take a while for it to dry um, so we might not get to the finishing part but i can show you what it looks like when we're done because i did the exact same technique on another captain america um, so you can see how i'm just letting those inks like mush and mix together and as they slowly start to dry You can go in and you can add more yellow. So you got you have a lot of working time with this, so you can play with it as well. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back in because the orange and the yellow likes to pool because they're both inks. They wanna run into those really deep crevices. Um, so I might go back in and add a little bit more yellow into those crevices. Uh, you know, just kind of pull that color around. So you can already see like if you just left it like that, it's actually a pretty great looking explosion. Um, you got a little bit of dark. Uh, you got a little bit of that dark showing through. You know, the, the interiors are really bright. You could very easily just leave it like this if you wanted to. And like I said, if you want to go back in, you can take some more of your yellow, go back and really pump up some of the coloration and stuff going on. But again, um, you just want to get to that point to where it's really nice. Colorful. So then, once you're pretty happy with like kind of the way that the yellows and the oranges are mixing together, you see we still have a lot of that yellow under the smoke. We have more of the orange kind of like in the crevices and stuff, uh, which is fine because that yellow is still going to show through when we go back in and do our other step. So let's just say we're I'm pretty happy with that. So again. We could just say, we're done. Great explosion as it dries, it's gonna get less shiny. Uh, it's really gonna like pop and look pretty good. i can show you exactly what that kind of technique looks like. So here's my black cat and you can see how the explosion that I used for her, we just kind of did that example there. And then, uh, and that was just an explosion that I made using uh, Domino's explosion. And then I just added a bunch of putty to it. Um, so here's with the white smoke. So this was the classic Captain America that I did. Um, so exact same technique. So you can see how I've got the yellow and the orange underneath. And then all I did is I took um, rainy gray and that Miskatonic gray. And I just started um, stippling so stipple is to just take like a take an old brush, get most of the paint off of it, and you just kind of come in and you just kind of like stab. Uh, you just stab the area, and it adds all this texture grain and stuff. And so then you just go in and you stipple over dry. You can't do it while the ink is still wet, and you just stipple the colors. And what I do is I aim for anywhere where I think the explosion color, like if the center of the explosion is here, and this is mostly smoke, I'll just come in and I'll do really heavy stip heavy stippling here. And I'll do lighter stippling here, like where the center of the explosion is, um, to this and that. And then you just kind of build that up as many times as you want. And you get yourself a nice, really natural looking explosion. And that's, of course, with light, if you want it to be a dark, like oily, kind of gross uh, explosion. Like, let's say on this domino here. Whoop. So exact same technique again. 
using the inks. I used a little more red in this because I wanted it to, to be a more violent explosion. Um, so in addition to the orange, I actually used more crimson red and went back through it. And then I just simply went in and I stippled and dry brushed with a super dark gray. Um, I took like a basic gray and I added more black to it. Uh, and then I also did a little bit of black mixed with red ink uh, to get a little bit of like a red black. And I just stippled that over the edges. And so these are kind of two different ways using the exact same approach of using the inks as the underbase and then stippling on top um, to create very different feeling explosions. So this one is a lot more angry and, and more violent. This one's a bit more like soft and, and boomy. You know, you don't feel like Captain America's is in much danger as maybe like Domino is here. Um, so the tone of the explosion can be completely changed based on the colors that you use for it. And that's all with the smoke. Everything else is kind of just the same. Um, Sam's wing changed. Uh, no, they weren't really changed. It kind of depends on the angle. So the box, the box shot, I think, you know, if you kind of like have, um, it depends on the angle of the shot and stuff. And of course, everything that you see on the box shot, um, they're not the final plastic. So they're just, they're typically their prints. Um, so they're prototypes. And that material doesn't always um, set the exact same way. So again, you can kind of see looking at these two side by side, you can see exactly like how once we do that stippling portion, um, we're going to get to that point to where we're going to have everything over the top. So with that, uh, I doubt this is dry enough, but we can go in and just mess around with it. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab uh, we'll just grab some black and some miskatonic gray because that's what I have available. And we'll mix up uh, a really quick smoke color here. And then we'll just make this Captain America have a bit more of an angry smoke cloud. And I might mix in just a little bit of red. I like adding a little bit of color to the gray because I feel like it makes the black a little more lively. Um, and a little bit more like it's being backlit by the colors. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of that. Use a little bit of the airbrush red. And then I'm gonna grab, there's no holder blue in this. It's the worst. Like I don't even know who I am anymore. We didn't use a single bit of holder blue on this guy. Okay. So now we can just come in. Probably shouldn't hold like three brushes in my mouth. Seems like a, a bit much. Folly. And we can just start stippling the cloud effect on. And again, if we wanted like a lighter color, maybe more gray instead of the black, we could do that. We're gonna go with the angry explosion here though. So just kind of see hopefully how. And our colors aren't perfectly dry. Again, you'd wanna do this over the inks once they were dry, ideally, so that you wouldn't get any, cause you don't really wanna wet blend the blacks and the oranges together. Um, now, if you wanted to, you know, you could, and we'll kind of see naturally here what that would look like because I don't have a hair dryer set up. Um, so our inks are still going to be a little wet, but that's okay. And again, with stippling, just like with dry brushing, start less is more and then just add more as you want to. So give it, give it a coat, let it dry, come back to it add more later because um, you can always add more you can't add less so it's always just a good idea to pay attention to the amount that you're adding and how everything's coming out and the nice thing about the stipple technique is again you're just going to pick up some of those raised edges 
that color is still going to show through underneath. So you're going to get this idea or this very good feeling that there's an explosion. There's a bunch of heat and light at the center. And then of course, on the exterior where all that smoke is coming from, that's where the black smoke is mostly originating from. And the other thing that I like about stippling is that it's a very textury technique because you're kind of stabbing the miniature with the paint and it's very uneven. It has that extra value add of making the smoke feel more gritty and real. Uh, and so again, especially with the darker color, it gives it that more extreme violent kind of explosion. And the other thing that you can do is you can always go back through. Um, you can use a thinned out white if you decide that it gets a little too dark or whatever um, to go back into like kind of the cracks and the crevices and you can work in more of the color uh, and then just use the inks again and you can do a full glaze of the inks. You can do a lot of stuff to play with the tone and the values of your explosion and how it kind of like all works together. But in the end, this is really all there is to it um, to make a really quick, cool looking explosion, whether it's dark or light. So you can see how we've got this nice, really oily, gross explosion. And it's gonna be a little more muddled than it would be normally um, because we had a bit of wet blending going on with our inks and stuff, but again, once everything's dry, you can always go back in. Like, let's say we just wanna like punch up some of these colors here that we get the underneath areas. So you can come back through and rework those areas. Maybe some of the yellow or the orange. And you can just kind of make it a process of wet, like you could wet blend everything if you wanted to. Um, two brush blending, I'm sure, is how Brendan actually does his explosions and stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to approach it. I find that the ink way with a bit of the stippling and stuff works really well for me because it just simply goes a lot quicker and gives me a result that I'm pretty happy with. Um, but you can see how you know, we can play even with what's there and amp up a little bit of that. And of course you can really mess with it and get it all sloppy wet, really gross. But now we've kind of reclaimed some of that brightness that we lost there. So it's really gonna help make our Sam Wilson on top pop. Really good, all right. So with that, it looks like we are out of time. So hopefully that gave a little bit of inspiration in how to tackle your own uh, explosions. I know we've been doing a lot of tactile explosions lately. So this is definitely a couple of ways of tactile explosions. Who knows what tactile things will pop up next. But there it is, our two-hour Captain America Sam Wilson alternate color scheme. Uh, I think it looks really dope. Can't wait to put him on the table as well and use him alongside my Avengers. But with that, we'll hop this off, Boop. come over here. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you had an exciting time. Uh, I'm looking forward to tactile splooshes. That, that is on the lizard base. I would say Crystal kind of has a tactile sploosh as well. Um, those water characters, you know, maybe there'll be more, who knows. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me, everyone. I hope that you had a wonderful time. Hope you're inspired. Hope there are things that you're looking forward to trying on your own painting tables. Be sure to join us again tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific as we continue on with our weekly streams. And of course, we'll be back next week. Next Tuesday, I'm going to be painting Jean Grey, the one, the only, the brand new addition to the X-Men. I'm very excited to get paint onto her, get her on the table. Uh, she's one of my favorites as well. And uh, really adds a whole lot of punch and extra dimension to the current X-Men roster. And then after that, uh, on Thursday at 1 p.m., Dallas Kemp will be painting Omega Red, uh, finally, the tentacle monster. Also watch the social medias for more greatest news reveals and all the latest information from Atomic Mass Games and Marvel Crisis Protocol. 
And you, of course, can join us on Wednesday and Friday next week, as well as we do other streams for our other games uh, and plenty more hobby and great game content. With that, we'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Civic. Until then, stay good to each other, be beautiful, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.